Welcome to the mysterious realm of Paranormal M. Subscribe, tap the notification bell, and drop a comment. Stay in the loop with our latest mesmerizing tales. Prepare for a voyage into the uncharted as we delve into the inexplicable. We hope you're excited. Shadow people driving a car. So this happened a few days ago, and I still get the chills. I swear this is real, and I'm not making up the story. One evening I decided to drive to an abandoned hospital with my girlfriend. Just because she's socially awkward, and that seems like a good place for hanging out in the past, so I was pretty confident that this was going to be a pretty normal place at night. I was wrong, however. There were people, so I kind of wasn't afraid or worried that something paranormal was going to happen. We went a bit farther away. After a while, we were talking, but my girlfriend wanted to have the lights on, which in my opinion is stupid. Not because we were doing anything, but I felt something. And right as I did, a car with no headlights rolls behind us to a big bush, as if it was watching us. We went out after a while to smoke a cigarette. Then I saw a shadow near a tree walking away from the general direction of the car that rolled past us. The thing was that you could see pretty much anything since there was a full moon. But not that man, he was dark. It seemed he was so slow and walked as though he was an older man. We went into the car. After just a few seconds, there was a shadow that ran so fast, I just caught a glimpse of it was as tall as a person, but I looked everywhere and no one was there. Then I asked my girlfriend if she had seen what I had. As soon as she said, yes, what was that? I switched in reverse and booked it. This has never happened to me, and I wasn't a believer in the paranormal. After that night, I've been watching videos on this topic and found out that what we saw wasn't human. I was dragged by my feet out of bed. My husband was working in a town called Moose Jaw in Saskatchewan. We usually just rent a short-term room or a house where he's working, since he moves around a lot. This time, he was renting the attic of an old house on Main Street. It was a large old home with multiple levels. Each level was being rented out as the owner renovated the home. I'm the type of person who loves staying in older houses. I especially was excited to stay in this house because of the strange architecture. You had to take a steep staircase on the side of the house up multiple floors to get to our suite. Once inside, you walked right into the bedroom with the kitchen and the bathroom along the back wall. As soon as I got into the house, I had a strange feeling, like chills down my spine strange. I told my husband, and we chalked it up to the moving jitters. Things got stranger from here. The bathroom and kitchen were both chucked into small cutouts in the house. The roofs were so short I could barely stand straight up, and I'm five foot two. In the bathroom, there was a little door and a little hidden wall behind the old clawfoot tub. Every time I would go to the washroom or take a bath, it sounded like somebody was like lightly tapping on the door. A couple of nights in, I started to have really, really bad nightmares. Ones where my husband would have to wake me up because I was screaming so loudly. It felt like I was pinned to the bed and I wasn't able to escape. I had never felt anything like that before. Can't explain it, but it felt like I wasn't wanted. Like something was warning me to get out or else. I stopped sleeping during the night. I was so scared of having nightmares. I would sit in bed and look out the window just hoping for daytime again so I could leave the house. I must have drifted off to sleep at one point. Because the next thing I knew I was being dragged out of my bed by my feet. My husband was sleeping next to me. And I remember grabbing onto him as though my life depended on it 
freaked out, jumped out of bed. And whatever was pulling me stopped right in front of the steep stairs. We didn't stay there another night. I still sometimes doubt that it even happened. But thankfully, my husband witnessed it and can reassure me that I'm not crazy. Whatever was in that house was not friendly and didn't want me there. I will never go back there again. My first experience seeing something. To this day, I have no clue how or what. I was seven years old, and the memory of it down to the last detail is etched in. I was sleeping next to my mom, happened to wake up in the middle of the night. I saw a little boy dressed in a white shirt, blue shorts, similar to a typical school uniform of primary school boys. And he entered the room. It didn't quite faze me at that point for some reason, but made me wonder who this could be. My first thought was that it was my cousin of the same age, but he wasn't even in the same city. The boy came in, walked toward the wall on the left side of the room. Toward the top of that wall was a Jesus picture, the modern-day white Jesus type, and to the left was a suitcase on top which my favorite stuffed teddy bear was. The boy stood next to the suitcase and seemed to stare at the Jesus picture above him, so I could see his back. I woke my mom up and pointed at the boy. I asked her who the boy was. She said there was no one there. That was when it hit me. I screamed and pretty much had the entire house up, my sisters and grandparents. I was wailing away in fear, trying to convince my mother that the boy was right there and I could still see him. My mother then asked me to close my eyes, which I did do. He was still there and my wailing and screaming continued. Then she said she'd pray for me, which he did. After maybe a couple of minutes, I checked again and the boy was gone. At one point, I seemed to remember seeing something whitish dripping off the boy's face, but that bit's a quite, well, it's kind of hazy. It's difficult to say whether it was a hypnagogic hallucination or what, really, but the whole ordeal lasted for at least 15 minutes while I was up and continued to see the boy throughout it. My ancestral home, a hotbed for strange sightings and sounds. The house in question has been my grandmother's ancestral home, which I have inherited and plan to renovate and refurbish. Although right now the house itself is unoccupied, we have relatives living in an adjacent house within the same property. I pretty much grew up in that house. And as a kid, between 7 and 11, I once saw a little ghostly boy walk into the room, and no one else could see it. A few years later, I saw a figure of a woman lying right next to me in the bed, which froze me in fear. I tried to wake up my mom, but I was too scared to even make a noise. Almost two decades later, it was just my grandmother who was living in the house. The mother of my aunt aforementioned relatives, passed away under undignified circumstances, to say the least. She was naturally unpleasant, prone to picking fights, cursing and yelling, and overall an unpleasant person. Not too long after her death, my aunt and her children allegedly started experiencing strange phenomena, like randomly opened doors and disheveled wardrobes where everything had been pulled out. Even hearing strange noises and seeing the weirdest things like legs suspended from their ceiling. I have to verify some of these claims, however. And then at 7.30 p.m. on the dot, my grandmother started to hear her voice around the house, cursing, yelling, and retching. This continued for a number of days until she brought over a priest to bless the area or something like that. Last year, my grandmother passed away. But just a few days ago, 
My cousin who walked toward that house to find her kitten had gone missing. Swear she saw the disembodied head and face of my grandmother just looking at her. She says it was just a face, no body, but that it didn't scare her at all, and that all she felt was good about seeing her. Despite my own experiences, I still don't know what I believe about these. But I'm inclined to figure it out, given that it's my house. Would like to know any thoughts. Thanks. Ask Reddit When I was 14, I got home from school. I was in my room playing Sims. My room was right off the kitchen and dining area where we also had our sliding door that leads to our deck, which led to a backyard but had a gate on it. I did this for maybe an hour. My brother wasn't home due to about five, and my dad about seven. So I was just playing my game when I heard what sounded like someone or something on top deck. So I kind of froze. I started to listen in case there was something going on. Then some ringtone went off that I didn't recognize. It was clearly a phone's ringtone going off, and then my two dogs started barking right after. So me having more balls than I thought, ran straight into the dining room area, and the ringtone had stopped, but my dogs were persistently barking at the backsliding door, let them out to have a look at whatever it was. I waited and looked around inside a phone or something that could have caused the ringtone, Nothing. I followed my dogs to the deck, looked all around outside for someone to be hiding. Nothing. Our gate wasn't open either. I was freaked out, so I went by my friend's house who lived nearby, waited for my dad to be home when I told him he just brushed it off to me being paranoid. Second. This is the second instance in this house, and it was when we were moving out. Now, we had lived in this house for about 10 years, and it was a nice neighborhood, keep in mind. Well, my dad had met the one, and we were going to move in together in a new home. I was about 18 at this point and had a boyfriend, and we wanted to spend the night together, but neither one of our parents would have approved. Then I got the great idea that our house hadn't sold yet, and I still had our garage door opener to get in. So we wound up lying and said that we were spending the night at a friend's house, and got some blankets on my laptop for what we thought would be a romantic night. We get there, set up my old room, and we're just getting ready to watch a movie on my laptop. Then we hear a loud-ass bang. Now, the house was empty, and no one had had access to it by my knowledge. Plus, it was about 11 p.m., we both just kind of stare at each other with a look of, what the fuck was that? Then another loud bang. Okay, at this point I'm like, the only reasonable noise I could chalk it up to is our basement doors that led to either side of the basement. Well, that means someone's here in the house. Or it's a paranormal thing, and either way, nope, 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 nope. Not trying to die tonight. My boyfriend gets up and says, get behind me just kind of stands in the doorway. I wait a second, then say, let's go. We grabbed our stuff as quick as possible and ran out to our car and made sure the garage was closed. We sat and waited to see if anybody would pop around the house, but nothing. That was the scariest thing to me, because I've slammed those basement doors before, so I know it had to be that, and there's no explanation besides someone being in the basement, doing who knows what, or a ghost. Ask Reddit. One night when I was about 12, I was home alone with my dog. Shiner was unusually very calm and relaxed about everything. But tonight, she was acting a little antsy, so I opened the back door and let her outside. It was a nice night, so I stood out there with her. She was barking and growling at the end of the yard for some reason. I figured it was the neighbor's cat going under her shed again. 
so I went over there to calm her down. When I was about halfway to her, the motion light pointed at the shed that it was flicked on. Shiner came running back to me, whining. She stayed between me and the fence and seemed to be trying to lead me away from it. I saw something move behind the shed. It stopped to where part of it was sticking out for a few seconds. And then it went to the rest of the way behind the shed. I have no idea what it was. The part sticking out from behind the shed was a few feet above the ground and just curved downward. It looked kind of like a pipe. My dog wouldn't go back outside the rest of the night. When I went to my bed, my bedroom was the closest room to the shed. She sat on the corner of my bed looking at that window all night. She would just stare out there and growl every so often. And every once in a while, the motion light would come back on. For a few days after that night, Shiner would not go near the shed if I took her out of the fence. Paranormal experience in Hershey, Pennsylvania Hotel this past weekend. Multiple spirits and entities possible. My friends and I had multiple paranormal encounters this past weekend during our guys' weekend in, during our guys weekend in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Out of respect to the hotel, I don't want to give away the name of the establishment, but I will say it was a chain location with good reviews, very close to Hershey Park. It was overall a very nice hotel. I have yet to do a search on this hotel to see if there are any other reports of paranormal activity from prior guests, but that will probably be my next step. We checked into the hotel without issue on Friday. We were not in the room very much. We basically checked in, put our stuff down, and left. We went to Hershey Park that night, returned to the room basically to just go to bed. Three out of the four of us, including me, fell asleep without issue. My one friend that stayed awake the longest was the first one to witness what we are now considering a paranormal incident. All of the lights in the room were off. As he was just laying there on bed on his phone at around 12.30 a.m., he claims the lights next to his bed began to flicker on and off. This happened for approximately two minutes before turning itself on. He didn't think much of it and thought maybe it had been a light like a loose bulb. Maybe the switch might have been on, who knows. But he got up, made sure the bulb was in tight, and ensured the switch was off, etc. He was only able to get the light off by unscrewing the bulb and screwing it back in, which he thought was weird. After getting back in bed, he said that this happened again approximately 30 minutes later. The light flickered for several minutes before turning itself completely on, despite all the switches being off. He claimed he was slightly unnerved at this point. He once again got up, unscrewed, and re-screwed in the bulb to turn the light off. He was unable to force himself to sleep. I slept through this, so I didn't witness this flickering or light-on incident. My first encounter happened at approximately 2.30 a.m. The lights were out. I woke up with a very uneasy feeling, like the hair on the back of my neck was sticking up, with the feeling I was being watched, which I was used to as a kid. However, within a matter of a few seconds, I was immediately filled with dread. As I began hearing what I can best describe as snarling coming from the room, I immediately tried to pass it off in my head as one of my friends snoring. But I have, well, I've camped with them, and I've roomed with them several times in the past. I know what their snoring sounds like, and this was not it. It was an evil growling and snarling that was actually coming from above their bed. I lie completely still, trying to rationalize it and this noise continued on and off for approximately 60-90 to 90 seconds until I quietly shut my eyes and said a prayer. Asking for the spirit to depart 
which I did when I was a child. And after I did this, the snarling noise stopped. I was extremely uneasy, and I wanted to wake my friends up and leave. But out of fear of being laughed at, I laid there and eventually went back to sleep. I slept through the rest of the evening, unaware that anything else happened, which it did. The next morning at the Continental Breakfast, I jokingly brought up that our one friend must have had some wild dreams last night, because when I heard him snarling in his sleep, when I said this, I noticed that my friend, the one that also had a light bulb experience, looked at me as if the blood had just drained from his face. He said, You heard it too? I told him yes. I heard the growling noise around 2.30. He said that he was also awake and described the noise as a werewolf growl coming from above the bed. He said he was lying awake most of the night terrified. He said it wasn't snoring coming from the other friend that was sleeping and that the noise was coming from above the bed, like I described really. He also said the light bulb incident happened again at 0330, but this time he left the light on because he was too afraid to get up and turn it off. Our other friend confirmed this. When he said he woke up around four and thought it was weird the light was on, turned it off by clicking the switch a few times and playing with the bulb. Finally, he said growling noise happened again, one last time around 4.30. After the light was turned back off, he was very frightened by the whole ordeal, said he was tempted to leave the room and sleep in the van, but didn't. He ended up being extremely tired all day Saturday, and he got little to no sleep Friday night. One of our friends slipped through everything, made fun of us most of the day Saturday when we would talk about what happened. He was very skeptic and didn't believe in the paranormal. He would roll his eyes at us and acted perturbed when we went to speak about it. He passed the noises off as our friend snoring and the lights as an electrical disturbance due to old or faulty wiring. Our other friend that just witnessed the light being on at 4 a.m. was very shook, agreed that he did feel uneasy in the room, but couldn't fully explain why. My other friend and I, that experienced the snarling noises, we were definitely shooken up, and both knew that it wasn't snoring. We also felt very uncomfortable in the room. What was also abnormal, which I am now just thinking about, all the paranormal activity seemed to be focused on one side of the room where my two other friends were sleeping. I was sleeping on the side of the room with the skeptic. It was on the other side of the room where the snarling noises were coming from and it was their light that kept turning on. And also, the final thing that occurred was that our friend's phone chargers were constantly, mysteriously being unplugged from various outlets around that side of the room. They were totally secure in the outlet, but when we would turn, the plug would be on the ground. They were accusing me and my friend of being jerks, and it was not us. It actually only stopped when they plugged their phone in and out of the side of the room, and yeah, this was occurring in multiple outlets on their side of the room, not just one. Saturday morning, before going back to Hershey Park for the day, we asked the front desk if there had ever been reports of paranormal activity in the hotel. There were two women working at the time, and they both looked at each other and then told us, yeah, there have been prior reports of paranormal activities in this hotel. They even had a name for the spirit, which was Melissa. They named it that because they believe it to be a spirit of a little girl that was staying at the hotel and was struck and killed in the road in front of the hotel several years prior. We tried to look up this incident, but couldn't find any news stories about it. We asked if the reports were specific to the room that we were staying in, but they told us no. It was multiple locations in the hotel, hallways, various rooms, reports from cleaning staff, etc. We contemplated checking out the room and not staying on our second evening. However, knowing that we would be extremely tired from a day at Hershey Park, 
and knowing that we wouldn't get a refund since we prepaid for a non-refundable rate, we decided to stay. My one friend, who's the skeptic, started joking about demanding the demon and evil spirit to show itself. I quickly shut him up with the most serious, you better never ever do or say that shit around me again. Knowing that it's only welcoming bad things to happen, really. Instead, I quickly asked Melissa to kindly leave her room, and that she was not welcome here, and I asked any and all other spirits to do the same. Luckily, our second night was mostly without issue, except for the phone chargers getting unplugged by themselves overnight. This is the kind of quote-unquote playful stuff I was used to as a kid. What really scared me, though, was the snarling and growling noises and the sense of dread I felt Friday night into Saturday morning. That was experienced similarly by, similarly by two of us in that room. Ask Reddit During college, I experienced what I thought was a potential haunting due to certain events that made my room scary to hang out in. Everyone agrees it was a haunting, especially after we did a ghost hunt and got EVP. I'll post that at the end. The first event happened while my sister was in school and parents were on a date. My grandmother was in her room on the other side of the house. I was napping before heading to school. As I'm lying there, I hear footsteps down the hallway. My door is wide open, so I look out to it and I see no one. I lay back down and then the door slowly creaks closed. I roll over and it slams shut. Panicking, I start yelling at my family, but no one says anything. I text everyone and they're still where they were. I feel creeped out, but try ignoring it. That is until the door slowly creaks back open, and I once again see no one. I start yelling for my grandmother, and I hear her open her door and start making her way toward me. I'm staring at the hallway, but see nothing aside from her walking toward me, and I start freaking out, explaining to her what's going on, and right as she reaches my room door, it slams shut. She's shaken by this too, quickly opening my door and rushing me to her room. This type of event never happened again. The next thing to happen is in regard to the heater vent. Now everyone would think an animal would be responsible, but how do you explain it being pushed out and hearing constant scratches when there's no animals to be seen both in the vent or under the house during said events? To explain what exactly happened, I'll talk about the event and the vent itself. You can find it at the foot of my bed, which is where my sister's bed now is. It was positioned between my bed and the television, and then my computer was to the right and the wall was to the left. Not long after the door event, I was playing my computer and started hearing faint scratches. Living in the woods, you would get used to animals under your manufactured home. Well, it was weird, but I ignored it until there was a banging against the vent. It looked like something was pushing up on it. I picked up my feet just in case, and I just watched it. But nothing else happened. A few nights of this happened, and my dad decided to check it out. Putting on gloves, he lifted off the vent, but nothing happened. The scratches continued without the vent being in place. My dad lowered in a camera, but nothing was in the vent. He then went outside to look under the house, and sliding came off very easy. Still saw nothing but heard the scratches. He kept an eye on it, even having an exterminator check it out, but, well, nothing came up. I started freaking out over the idea of something grabbed my feet and began putting my huge textbooks on top of the vent. I'd hear the scratches go on all night, fall asleep, then wake up to the books toppled over and the vent popped out. Nothing ever showed itself in my room. I had the door locked because my boyfriend lived in the room with me, so no one was coming in to mess with the books. 
This went on for a couple of months before just stopping abruptly. The night it stopped, we had another event. This was just a simple, but scary as hell. My boyfriend and I were sleeping. We noticed that the scratches were gone, and were in thought just wondering what the hell was going on. As we lay there in the dark, we feel pressure on our legs. Next thing we know, our blanket is literally being ripped off of us downward as if being pulled toward the vent. We panic and scream and turn on the light, only to find that the vent is in the place along with the books. This also never happened again. The last event that happened and sparked my sister to have us try ghost hunting with a few days during the beginning of summer term. My dog. Sorry. My boyfriend was at his laptop at the bed, and I was at my computer. Our door was open, and we were playing Aeon. A-I-O-N. Aeon? Aeon. Whatever. All of a sudden, my beaded curtain starts swaying in the door like someone just walked in. I look down and literally see a dark, childlike figure crawling on the floor right in my doorway. The curtains are scrunched around it and it had holes where the eyes would have been. I freak out and it's just gone in a flash. But my sister in the other room along with my boyfriend and I hear what sounds like quick crawling down the hallway. This freaked us out and we decided to go ghost. <laughs> my dog going crazy. This freaked us out, and we decided to go ghost. Said it again. Ghost hunting that weekend. I put up a cheap camera. My mom had gifted it to me, set it on my computer desk, aimed it at the vent. It had no night function, so it captures sound mostly. We take our three phones, all the same kind, using one each to either film, take a picture, or record voice. We assured everyone's hanging outside and turn off the electricity. We then went around looking through the rooms. Nothing is found at first until we listen to the recording on a cheap camera. During the time we were getting ready while we were in the hallway and about to close the door, we picked up what sounded like a dog breathing into the mic. It breathes normally as we're speaking, but then stops, like sucking in breath like it's been caught when my boyfriend thinks he hears something weird in the room. It then begins breathing for a few seconds before stopping again when I respond with, What? In a panicked way before the you know, breathing a moment and then stopping again. The breaths happen between all of us talking, as if it wants to not be noticed, but then stops right as we're talking. It's almost as if something or someone was hiding in my room. Obviously, there wasn't since my room was so small that my bed was in the closet that didn't have doors and there was no space under my bed for anyone to hide. This EVP was the only thing found, and it was in the beginning of my room. We had shut the doors after leaving and nothing abnormal happened when we opened it. The vent was intact and the camera was in the same place. It creeped us out enough that I slept with the TV on, just in case. After that was discovered... We uploaded it to YouTube and just went on with life. Nothing scary happened again. Luckily, I even had someone clean up the clip for me, and they confirmed that there would be a total of four different voices. Just breathing, there was no matter how much we were edited, just couldn't explain exactly what it was. But they thought maybe it was an animal. We did have a cat, but she was in her purr carrier outside during the hunt. Whatever it was... Made for an odd experience we'll never forget. I'm pretty sure my childhood home was haunted. I live in a pretty big family home for 26 years. The house itself is only about 34 years old. My parents built it. We were the only owners until we sold it. My grandma passed away when I was seven, and I think she would often visit us in the house. I can tell because she smoked, 
and we would smell cigarettes every now and again. No one else in my family smoked, or our friends don't smoke, and it wasn't all the time. Then I'd be sleeping and feel someone poking at my head. I initially chalked it up to my covers touching me, but it happened even if I wasn't covered. I also felt like someone was resting their hands on mine. I had my own room at this time, so no other siblings were in there. I could often feel someone standing by my bed or by the door or closet. It didn't always feel eerie, and it wasn't every day, but still. Then one night, I dropped my sister off at her friend's. She said she would call when she was ready to be picked up. I sat in my room alone, just playing on my computer with a huge bang and knock came crashing into my bedroom door. It wasn't the floor settling or anyone downstairs. I opened the door and no one was there. I was so scared I drove to the store until my sister came home. Rubber bands would also randomly appear, another sign of my grandma. The neighborhood was not far from an ancient Native American burial ground. This all very well could also just be sleep paralysis and nothing at all. However, I will say I've always felt very connected. For example, before my grandma passed, we were in her apartment getting her ready to go to the hospital. And when I looked out the window and saw a bunch of motorcycles and cars, no connection to those, but they are vivid in my mind, I thought to myself, she's going to heaven. I didn't know she was even sick. I also saw a black and white version of my mom emerge from her bathroom closet when I was on the toilet. My mom's alive and was in her bed at the time. I was using her restroom. Then I had a random dream about my brother-in-law getting in trouble in a very certain way, and the next day he did. Nothing criminal, just personal trouble. Vivid Childhood Memory, Haunted House When I was young, which is like under five, my parents were still together, and my younger brother and I spent a lot of time together at our dad's brother and father's house. My dad's brother had four kids, so we spent a lot of time there with our cousins. There was a bedroom that was converted into our playroom, just a smallish room with lots of toys. We would always have weird feelings in there. But one time in particular, a few of us were standing in the middle of the room when all of a sudden the toys started moving on their own. Items were being pushed far onto a shelf and they moved forward before falling off to the ground. It all happened in slow motion like an invisible string was pulling everything to the center of the room. We were creeped out to say the least and told the adults, who somewhat dismissed it. Another time I was playing with a stuffed lion in the playroom. I put it in this little wooden shelf and locked it. I went out to the living room where everyone else was, then went back to that room to find the shelf unlocked and the lion three feet away from the door. I was about three or four. I remember being angry at whoever was moving it and started asking everyone back in the living room if they moved it. They said, no, go ask your cousin. My older cousin, who was 10 or 11, was in his room with music playing loudly and was annoyed I even knocked on his door. Definitely wasn't him. One of the scariest memories I have was in this house. I get chills thinking back to it. I was sharing the bottom bunk bed with a cousin of mine. The door was open and faced out to the hallway. I'll never forget this dark silhouette of a man turned from the living room down his hallway and started walking down the hallway toward us. We were both awake and looked at each other scared. He had red glowing eyes and was very tall, but somehow resembled our grandfather's figure. He looked as if he was staring at us down the hallway and then stopped, turned into the playroom. We told our dad about it the next day. I remember my dad picking me up to explain how tall he was. My parents divorced. I haven't seen my father in over 15 years. 
My biological grandfather is dead, and I don't communicate with those cousins anymore. I never want to see that house again. I have this vague memory of a white figure I remember seeing when I was younger. So before I start talking about the memory, I should probably say that as of now I'm still kind of young, literally 15, but this took place like 10 or 11 years ago when I was like 4 or 5 years old, so I actually have the capability to talk about it now. Also, this would be the first time I actually talk about this experience to anyone online or anyone in general. So to get started, I should probably state the obvious and say that this could just be something that my kid mind thought up and this could maybe not be real, but the experience felt too real to be fake or made up in my mind at the time. The night it happened was a regular night for the most part, and the only thing that was off was that my grandma was staying with us. But that only feels off now because at the time she was staying with us all the time. She would sleep on one of the two couches that my family had. That night I ended up sleeping on the other couch, because I was probably too tired to go to my bed. Also, it could be that a four or five year old will literally sleep anywhere. So I fell asleep, maybe 11 p.m., 12 a.m. And at first it was a semi-normal besides literally falling asleep on my couch, because usually at the time my parents would wake me up and put me in my bed if I fell asleep anywhere that's not my bed. But fast forward to about 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., I wake up out of nowhere, like literally nothing woke me up, and just woke up on my own. My grandma was asleep, the porch light was still on, but besides that light, it was pitch black. I was scared of the dark back then, and you're probably thinking, well, the porch light was on, so you don't have to be scared, right? No. It actually scared me more because it felt so unsettling to me back then. So the only logical thing to do when you're four or five years old and scared of the dark is to get into my parents' room to sleep with them. But I saw something, and I'd never forget it. I saw this white void or figure in the hallway to my parents' room, and I was way too scared to go next to it for obvious reasons. I think to wake up my grandma, but I just don't. I don't remember why I didn't wake her up. That one was on me. So I'm just standing there staring at the unidentified white thing in the hallway of my childhood home. But eventually I built up enough courage to just go up to it and just to fastly walk past it to my parents' room. I go to their room and I just fall asleep, not knowing what that white thing will be in my mind for the next ten years and many more. I wake up the next morning, I go out of my parents' room and it's gone. That figure that scared me previously that morning was just gone. Never told my parents, my grandma, and honestly, I don't think they'd believe me. I bet my grandma would understand though, because she went through something like it herself in the past. We don't live in that house anymore. As of right now, we moved out over a year ago. My dad lives three and a half hours away from my mom. Lucky I spend the two weeks a month with both my parents. It's the present day, and I've yet to tell anyone about this experience until now. I don't know if I'm the only one who experienced it, especially as a kid. My grandfather haunts her house by having a party. So a little backstory to this situation. My childhood home was built by my grandfather and my grandma, and they both lived there until they got divorced. And my mom lived her childhood here as well. My grandfather was an alcoholic and had a bunch of people at the house, partied and drank with them and played music even when my mom and aunt were kids and sleeping at the house. Well, years go by and my grandfather passes away. We moved to the house after my grandma passed. 
I've known that both my grandparents' spirits live and wander around that house ever since I was a child, because my mom used to go to a medium, and she told her a bunch of stuff that were really scarily accurate, that most of them were messages from my grandfather about her porch stairs being broken and needing a fix, our dog being sick and wondering what's in the shed in our backyard that wasn't there when he lived there. Anyway, I've always heard music playing, even when all the TVs and radios have been off. Usually during nighttime, like I'm still currently hearing the music clearly. A bit muffled, but you can tell it's music. I've gone through the whole house, turned the radio off, and made sure the TVs are off, but I can still hear it. Everyone else is asleep since it's almost 3 a.m. Since I'm now hearing it, it reminded me how my mom told someone a couple of weeks back that she experienced exactly the same thing quite often. Even my grandmother says her house comes to life when no one is here. Every time she stays here, actually. This doesn't freak me out, but it does drive me crazy. But also somehow brings comfort since it's a family member since, you know, said them themselves. There's no need to be scared or worried. And tell the dogs not to bark, because it's only him walking outside. I don't know if that made sense, but I hope it did. I hope the party ends soon so I can sleep. Suspected dead friend reached out to me. So I was trying to fall asleep. I was half asleep, and then something started putting thoughts and images into my head. Like I could clearly tell that they weren't my own thoughts. And something was, well, trying to telepathically communicate with me. There was a scary and distorted image of a face. It appeared as a thought in my head. I don't remember what it said exactly, but basically that it's from someone who I think is dead, but they're still alive and I need to go see them immediately. The thoughts didn't mention any hints of who this is about or where I needed to go but a person came to my mind immediately. A friend who committed suicide a few months back, and somehow I instinctively knew exactly where I needed to go to a particular abandoned building where I used to hang out sometimes. I didn't go because I really wasn't a safe place to go to by myself late at night alone, and I was frankly very terrified of this whole thing. But I regret not going for some reason, even though it would have been a terrible idea. I still wonder what would have happened if I had went, and I wonder if I'll ever try to communicate with me again. Six years ago, I had a premonition. To begin this story, I would like to preface it by saying that it's the most shameful moment of my entire life. I'll never not look at the person I was at this time with anything but disdain. But, it was what it took to change who I am, and who I am today. I hope that telling you that will lend my story credibility as it isn't something I would actually tell people if it wasn't for the fact it literally changed my life and my perception of reality. With that said, I can jump into how I had a premonition. Considering the story starts with the premonition, that's where I'll begin. I worked at a landscaping company. I had just moved out of my friend's parents' house. My friend was a heroin addict who had since passed away. I was quote-unquote raised by my father who cooked me out the day I turned 18. I was 24 years old. I started staying with a girl I'd started to see. It didn't work out, but I was living with her paying half the bills in her house at the time. One night before work I had a dream that I was in the back passenger seat of my trailblazer, and I'm bleeding all cut up. I look out of the back passenger window, it's all shattered out and I see a tree and my friend I had known since I was ten years old. 
who up until then I had seen only a handful of times in five years. So it was very odd to see him there. I asked him, if, well, if I was dead. He looked at me with a look that pretty much said, you fucking bout to be. But he just said, no, you're just really messed up and an ambulance is on the way. My response was, fuck, I'm going to jail. And I wake up. I go to work and remember the exact house we were working at. We had done a few jobs there previously, I think that's why. I told my friend I worked with it. I'm like, well, oh. I worked it about my dream. I thought it was crazy. He even told me I better start wearing my seatbelt because I never did. Fast forward roughly two weeks. My boss is congratulating us on how hard we've been working. Buys a crew a 12-pack of Bud Light on Friday. I think it was around the 4th of July and it was definitely summer. I drink two and take off. And at this point in my life, if I drank two beers, I'm going to go get a 12-pack and drink it till I pass out. I had no self-control. So I do that and buy a pack of 12 Bud Light Platinum on my way home. Unluckily, my friend who had now passed away that I was staying with called me told me him and a few of other friends were drinking at my buddies and I should come by. So of course, that's what I did. Told my friend whose house it was that I wanted to sleep there because I had no intention of driving shit-faced. He said that's no problem. I end up hammered. I don't remember getting in my vehicle. All I remember is waking up seeing my friend I hadn't seen in five years and asking him if I was dead. It literally happened exactly how it happened in my dream. I was only conscious for a few seconds, my friend said, and I passed back out after, well, he said what he said. Next thing I remember is being woken up, getting my head stapled. Entity has haunted me since I was a little boy. When I was little, I don't remember much, so this is according to my mom. But these things haven't left, so she told me the truth that I had a friend. A friend, in air quotes. An older woman about my mother's age at the time, 28-ish, would sit outside with me and watch me play. Even if my mom thought I was alone and she was outside with me, this woman would be there, and we talked a lot. As I grew up, I would see her out of the corner of my eye, and still, like tall, around five foot six ish, wearing a plain white but torn sundress or a nightgown. As I grew older and she would show up out of the corner of my eye, I would suddenly feel dizzy and sick, like I just got punched in the gut. One night I fell asleep early, not something unusual since I was watching my siblings and basically raising them during this time. And I had a horrible nightmare of my siblings getting ripped apart by all sorts of demonic-looking things and terrifying secrets of others all around me. I woke up to find I was paralyzed. I could barely breathe. Thought it was a night terror and waited. But it was different. The cold and even my four blankets was enough to warm me. Then, from the shadows, the woman walked from the shadows... That's when I saw her face was melted together like someone had glued her face together and messed up. This is still happening to me. My girlfriend has started seeing her too. We've both been blessed by a priest and several other leaders in other religions, but so far nothing. I wouldn't normally care. But recently my girlfriend and I have started waking up with very deep scratches that look like nails raked across her skin. But instead of nails, they're talons. Ask Reddit. About three years ago, I was alone in my room. I was casually cleaning my old room when I took a glance outside my door. For context, my old house has a massively long hallway. The light on the end of the hallway was on, as was my bedroom light. The entire hall was at least somewhat illuminated. 
As plain as day, I could see a shadow peeking out at me from the other end of the hallway. Two things still stick with me to this day. First was the size, based on how far I was from it, and in relation to the doorway, it was probably only three or four feet tall. The second thing was how vague the figure was. It's hard to put words to it. I could see the shadow clearly, but I couldn't perceive it. It sounds stupid, I know, but that's the only way I can describe it. If you've ever seen something that your brain doesn't want to see, you understand the feeling. It's almost as if you had a hard time focusing on the thing. I remember specifically stopping dead in my tracks and staring at it. After a solid 30 seconds, the figure ducked into the room it was peering out of. I went and checked the room. There were no signs of anyone being there. The funny part of it is, is that this is the only experience I've had. I've never noticed any paranormal before since that. I guess that one experience rattled me enough to stick with me through the years. Ask Reddit. I don't know if this is paranormal or just flat out strange. When I was in high school, my next door neighbor and I were best friends. Just in front of our homes was a trailhead, and it led to a creek path that traveled for miles down to the city and up toward the mountains. I used to bike to school on it and walk my dog. A very common route that was safe in the daytime. My mom, however, liked to warn me of going out on the trail at night, for there has been a history of murder and rape occurring on the path at night. Just the unfortunate kind of thing that happens on a public trail used by tons of people. So skipping forward a little, my friend and I were going to hang out one night. I had to get something inside my house, and he was going to meet me at the mailboxes in between our houses. As I opened the front door, I saw him staring down the street, yelling. When I shouted back, he turned to me with a shocked look on his face turned back to what he was looking at. He came toward me and pointed toward the light post that's on our side of the street directly across from the entrance to the path. He thought that I was playing a joke on him, pointed out a person that was sitting beneath the lamppost with their head staring directly at the ground. The person's hair fell into their lap and they remained motionless. We called out several times to what seemed to be a woman possibly drunk and taking a moment to herself, but she didn't move an inch. As we began to go inside to let her parents know, she stood up, keeping her head facing the pavement, and walked slowly across the street toward the entrance of the path. Meeting my great-grandmother When I was 11, I was at my grandparents' house one day. My grandmother called me into the kitchen because she made me soup. When I was about to start, well, taking it to the dining room, I suddenly felt as if I was in a trance. There was a woman in the doorway, but I couldn't see her very well because there was a bright light emitting from behind her. It was so bright that I could really only make out the bottom half of her. I could tell she was older because she had wrinkles and spider veins on her legs. She was wearing a floral dress and an apron. It was like I was looking at her under a magnifying glass. I could see every detail in her skin and every vein so clearly. She looked like she was moving her feet left to right, like you do when you're bored or tired of standing. She said to her grandparents' dog, who was staring at her intensely, Ella, come here, I kept calling her name. Then I snapped out of my trance when I heard my grandmother calling my name. I asked my sisters and my grandmother if they saw a woman in the doorway. They said that they hadn't, and I know it wasn't my grandmother because she was in the kitchen with me, and she wasn't wearing a dress. 
Later, I told my mom what happened, and she said her great-grandmother used to wear a floral dress all the time, and also an apron and a rolling pin, because she was always baking. She showed me a picture of her, and she looked familiar. I'm now living in that same house, and I get an uneasy feeling whenever I pass the doorway. I feel like I'm being haunted by a live person. My father's in the hospital and has been for over two weeks. He will not be coming home. He is going to a nursing home for end-of-life care due to his medical issues. Since he went into the hospital, I have not slept well at all. Every time I close my eyes, it's like a hallucination playing in my mind. A hallucination of events that have not happened, such as seeing him laying in a hospital bed and a priest giving him last rites or picking up the phone to be told he passed, or the family sitting around him. He takes his final breath, and then with each of them, it cuts to a part and it's his funeral. This part is always the same, it's been going on for two weeks. Yesterday I was lying in bed and I turned to get out of bed. My father was standing at the bottom of my bed and looking at me and jumped over the covers and when I looked he was gone. He said this to a few people and I've gotten a few different reasons like I'm crazy, etc. Maybe it's a manifestation or a live poltergeist sort of thing. I've been told to go to the hospital and ask for forgiveness for things I did when I was younger and that maybe it would stop. I haven't visited him since New Year's, because I live like three hours away and I don't drive. But he told me when I was leaving the hospital that he loved me, which is strange, because he's never ever said it to me before. And then I video chatted with him via my mom's phone on Saturday. He kept saying it was this un... Well, saying that it was unusual in general. We've never seen eye to eye on anything. And early last year, he was telling me he hated me and never wanted to speak to me again. I was expecting him to tell me to get out of the hospital when I went to visit, but in fact, he wanted me there, but didn't want my siblings. I'm so mentally and physically drained, and I just want, well, whatever their hallucinations, I guess, to just stop. But they don't, well, they only get worse. And now I'm seeing him in my house. Anyone ever experienced anything like this or know what to do or am I just crazy? Lennox Hotel in Boston. Any similar experiences? I've stayed at the Lennox Hotel in Boston many times on work visits from New York City. It's a really nice and historic hotel in the Back Bay area. I hadn't experienced anything paranormal before, but on this visit a couple of odd things happened. The first was two nights ago. I was in a light sleep phase and then suddenly my bed felt like somebody had sat down on the corner of it. Since I was half asleep, I didn't think much of it until the next morning when I realized that was kind of weird. The last night I woke up in the middle of the night and in the dark next to my bed it looked like a figure of a man was standing there. I knew it wasn't a real person and I wasn't really scared since they were more of a figure. I couldn't see any features other than the fact that he might have been wearing green and was either bald or in a hat or didn't have a lot of hair. I assumed my eyes were playing tricks on me, but they didn't adjust after a few moments so I actually kicked toward that area and when the figure remained, I finally turned on my flashlight and then the figure was gone. A Google and Reddit search shows that the hotel is often recognized as being haunted. But I can only find information about room 300, which is not the room or the floor where I stayed. 
Apparently, room 300 is haunted by a poker-playing, cigar-smoking, friendly ghost named Red. I also read that women were murdered in a room at Lennox in 1890, or excuse me, 1989. But I'm not sure how that fits into my story. Childhood Experience I feel like I need to share this. When I was a wee lad, say about 5-ish to 12, we lived in this big house with three floors and a basement. My grandparents' bedroom as well as one guest bedroom was on the third floor. I would hang out there by myself sometimes since there was a computer I could play on, a TV I could watch and I could just kind of hang out by myself. Everyone would be downstairs where the living room and kitchen were. The computer sat across the door that you would sit with your back directly facing the doorway. The TV was also positioned in such a way that your back would be to the door when watching the telly. Another important fact was that our house was split into two, and our neighbors lived on the other side. So on the other side of one of the walls were their neighbors. When I'm on the computer watching TV, I would hear footsteps coming down the hall toward the bedroom. Expecting someone to come in, I played no mind and just kept on gaming or doing whatever I was doing. The footsteps wouldn't stop and kept approaching. After some time thinking that it's taken so long, the hallway isn't that long, I turn around to see that no one's there. At the same time, the footsteps would stop. This didn't happen once or twice. This happened constantly. Any time I was up there with my back facing the door, the footsteps would begin after a certain period of time. And each and every time I turned to see no one and the footsteps to stop. It was spooky at first and then got annoying. I eventually told my family but they brushed it off saying it must be the neighbors. It can't have been. The footsteps sounded like someone was walking down the hall. It would only happen when I'm not paying attention to the door. Then they would stop when I turned around to see. I emphasize this because it's such a clear and vivid memory of this thing happening, and it was consistent and replicable. I was little and obviously no one took me seriously. So I just kind of accepted this was happening, not really thinking much of it. When I was probably around 10, while playing the PC, the monitor began to violently vibrate. This was probably the most paranormal and freakish thing that's happened to me. The footsteps never sent me running, but this made me turn my afterburners on. I fucking booked it out of there. Ran down to my family in the kitchen and explained what happened. They told me it must have been a truck that passed by. Nah, man. This was like something grabbed and just started shaking it like mad. Fuck that. Another time I was sleeping in the guest bedroom. I think my parents were away and, well, didn't want to sleep by myself. So I went to that spare bedroom next to my grandparents' bedroom on the third floor to sleep for the night. I remember hearing space music. Kind of like what I imagine Apollo 11 crew purportedly heard in space. Stereotypical spacey alien tones being played in the air. When I was little and still today, I would often have very vivid and often nightmarish dreams. Nowadays, I enjoy them much more and can sometimes lucid dream and rarely can come out of my body. Anyway... I remember one specific dream where I was sitting alone in my grandparents' bed in their bedroom. It was nearly pitch black. I can't remember if in the dream I was watching TV or just sitting there. I do remember seeing a point of light in the middle of the room, just kind of there. I looked at it, and that's all I remember. Today, I still often dream about that house. Despite the anomalous activity, I miss that house and want to visit it again. That being said, I don't believe in ghosts, the afterlife, or, well, anything like that. 
Even though I'm greatly interested in the phenomenon, I try to be straight edge about it and reject any wacky claims like humans are containers of souls, a la Bob Lazar. Very intriguing idea, but it's, you know, it's probably not real. I'm skeptical but open-minded. I don't know what that was that I experienced, but perhaps a false memory. Perhaps I was too young and dumb to really get up with a rational explanation. This kind of is winding up and being a kind of a ramble, but I needed to share it, mostly for myself, so don't forget that this happened.